Hey guys, how's it going? Okay. Just getting set up here. Hey Sapphire. So could you please tell me if this mic sounds okay? I tuned it a little bit. I think it's louder now. So it should be good. Hello, hello. Does it sound okay, you guys? Can you hear me? <laughs> Please let me know if this works. It's kind of quiet if I, am I louder now? Do you guys like the headphone microphone better? Like this one that I usually wear? Because this is a better microphone, but it's not as loud. Oh, you have to have your volume, okay. So would you guys rather me use this one so you can hear me better? It's just not as high of quality of microphone. I'm trying to get a better like amplifier thing, but I can, let's see. I can stick it in my face closer, but then I'm like a DJ. <laughs> Oop, sorry. Okay, how's that? Is that better? Sorry, pop the mic. I know this is a it's a it's a pro professional DJ mic where you have to get up on it. So <laughs> does that sound better, you guys? It's I mean you can hear my headphones and stuff moving around, but you might be able to hear me better. So anyway, all right. Let me know if it sucks. Is that way better? Okay. Well, I guess we're doing the, I guess we're doing the headphones. <laughs> yeah, the head, yeah, I just, I think I need to get a better headset. I don't know if it sounds okay. Let me know if you can still hear cracking and like when I tug on this thing, sometimes you can hear it. So, all right. Better, I should ask Matt what he uses. His was sounding pretty good the other day. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so this is where we left off last week and I was thinking about, you know, when you come back to your models and you look at them again, you're like, oh man, I, sh I can fix this, I can fix that. So there is a, a good compressor. I don't know what a compressor is. Yeah, I hear you, Rabbit. So I have, a, it's called a Scarlet line-in because this microphone is analog. So it goes from, from here and it gets split into stereo sound, goes through a, a Scarlet, so analog in. And then I have some gain controls and they're almost cranked. They're like 9.8. If I crank them to 10, then it starts to bring in static and all sorts of crap. So it's, uh, it's not as good. So they make another version of this microphone and it's called the Rode Podcaster and it goes directly into USB into your computer and I've heard nothing but praise on that one and it has a volume control right on the microphone and you can uh, monitor the microphone with headphones. So, oh squishes them towards the center. Yeah I think it's more about like the amplification rather than like the broad anyway <laughs> getting into getting into sound <laughs> so anyway but thanks I'll, I'll have to look into that I'll check it out okay so with this dragon I looked at some other dragons online too and I, I kind of got some ideas of where I want to take this guy and I wanted I kind of want to broaden his 
snout up and down not wi not wider but taller and thanks for joining me tonight everybody another Tuesday evening always nice to talk to you guys it's fun stuff um, I wanted to um, yeah, I'm gonna close I'm gonna close his mouth again and then I want to put some teeth on his mouth as it's shut just for just for a different way of doing it I think because I really want to thicken this as well what's going on everybody hey Zamaka how's it going welcome to the stream Tuesday stream gonna try a couple things snake hook brush for the win we have the Salt Lake City Comic Con coming up this week I'm going on Friday to check it out let's see I'm gonna try something I'm gonna to try to do that uh, projection trick so this will be interesting because this is not high resolution. This is uh, dynamic, dynamically subdivided. Well, let me, um, I wanna tell my students that I went live here. So hold on one second. Looks like I can share this. Share now. Okay, sweet. A pixel logic. Share to a page. 3D character workshop. Oh, that's my own page. Hmm. I wish I could post it to a group. Oh well. Okay. That's pretty cool. So, uh, oh, you want to go, but it's too expensive to Comic Con, like the local one. Oh, test tomorrow. Yes, webinar, webinar. <laughs> you guys, I'm just going to have to say I'm super nervous for tomorrow. Tomorrow is a webinar at noon my time, which is 11 a.m. Pacific time. So um, let me... Uh... <laughs> Tons of money on art. That's like me when I go to CTN. Holy cow. CTN, I buy all the artist books there. I can't help myself. So here is the registration to sign up for my webinar tomorrow. If you haven't already. Okay. So I'm going to duplicate this and I want to project. What's up Lance? Welcome, welcome. How's it going man? So I want to try something here. I'm going to Z remesh this guy. Z remesher is the name of the game. I'm going to do it. Let's try eight and turn on the lines so we can see what it looks like. What brushes do I use to get the squared look of Disney Infinity? I use a, a lot of different brushes. It depends on the exactly what I'm doing and what I need but um, I have a bunch of my own custom brushes. They're down here on the bottom. And this is exactly the user interface and the brushes that I used to make the characters that I worked on personally on Disney Infinity. And it's not necessarily the brush, it's more the technique of how we did it. But if you want this user interface and these brushes, they're available for free on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can go check them out. They are free. Okay, so here we are with the Z remeshed mesh. And sometimes you'll get super sharp points like this. And what you can do, which is okay, what you can do is come in here and just inflate them slightly. And that's just so when you go to project again, they'll grab 
the, uh, the it'll grab the the detail in the interface. Okay, so there we are, Z remeshed, and you'll notice that we lost a lot of the detail that I had going. So if you look at the old one, see all this detail I had? And you look at this new one and it goes away, which is okay. But we are going to project. So I'm going to turn this other layer off, this uh, subtool off, and then we're going to project all. I don't want to project polypaint. Now it's not going to grab all that information because it's just low resolution. But it's still it's still kind of there. And I can cut it back in later. Unless if I actually subdivided it up a couple levels and I projected, then it would actually grab all that information. So um let's see, got a layers question. Did you have all those mesh parts broken into different subtools referring to the hippo? Um all the mesh parts. So are you talking about like the teeth and all that stuff? So let's see, I can load them up really quick. Hippo more four. So here, here's the hippo and you can see the parts. So I have the teeth, the tongue, the body and the eyeballs. Those are the four parts. And each, each of those subtools has a set of a layer layers on them and each layer contains the morph target that I made for each one. So will the webinar be recorded to watch later in case there's information you missed? Um, yes, but I'm doing a giveaway if you attend live. So, but yes, I'm, I'm going to try and have a replay afterwards. So for everybody who missed, but it is better to watch live if you can. Okay, and I will be opening my core course up again, excuse me, for um, fall enrollment tomorrow, along with that webinar. That's kind of what the webinar is about. It's, uh, I'm going to do some free training, but I'm also opening my course. With notes, oh yeah, sure. Um, I'll probably make the slides available too, to download, and then you can just you don't have to take any notes, you can just download the slides. Okay. I'm pretty excited. Like I said, I'm, I'm super nervous. So the most people I've ever given a talk in front of is 800 middle school students. That was pretty crazy was for my son's middle school and uh, I have quite a few people signed up for that webinar and I'm kind of getting nervous okay but also I'm super excited at the same time Okay. <laughs> Those middle school students, they'd be like, did you make Halo? No, I didn't make Halo. <laughs> you can log into it, but uh, nobody's there yet. <laughs> Thanks guys. It's my first one. Ryan Kingsland does them all the time and uh, super <laughs> yeah it's true it's true I'm pretty now you know now that I've been streaming for a while I'm pretty used to you know streaming live I mean the most people I get in here usually is like 80 or 90 which is still quite a few I mean if you picture a room full of 90 people that's that's quite a few people let's see now I'm gonna try something with these they're they're not necessarily horns but I'm going to make them horns so let's see split hidden 
because I kind of want to bring the skin up and around them. Also, I'm not really... I hate to be that sales guy, too. I mean, I don't... You know, I, I, I don't mind pitching stuff in here once in a while, a little bit, you know, but I hate to be that that used car salesman. Like, hey, hey, go buy my stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just not that guy. I'm more like, hey, here's my course. If you like it, join me. I'd love to have you in there. If not, cool. Maybe next time. <laughs> so... It's kind of weird. It's new. It's it's all new to me, you know. Gosh dang it! Come on, stay here. Ugh. Why does it keep selecting that? There we go. I was just wanting to move my gizmo. You've been a guest on a radio show a lot of people listening but it's more like talking to the people on the phone yeah it's true they're just kind of like right there isn't it and I like I like doing interviews with people that's that was part of the plan of my course is to give me an excuse to talk to industry professionals and it's it's really cool because I have a whole bunch of people lined up that have said yes they would love to and it's just a matter of time getting them interviewed so that's all that's all part of the course like I mean big 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 names so like like Corey Loftus for example and uh, Michael DeFeo and yeah just super super friendly kind people from all sorts of disciplines not necessarily sculptors but people who work with sculptors in their line of work okay let's see Question for you, I downloaded your brushes, they're amazing. I can't seem to figure out what the soft pea brush does though. You must be doing some. Yes, it's a paintbrush. You're not an idiot. You know, paint painting a ZBrush comes last, so it's kind of I don't know. <laughs> oh, let's see. Did I miss any questions? Talking about tile and stone. <laughs> okay it's interesting what people you know are interested in it's, it's interesting to me okay I'm gonna hit that good old Z remesher again you have to be careful when you use Z remesher because it will it will shrink your mesh so I'm gonna take it up to a nine hit that Z remesher again because I want to I want more geometry right in here and the first time I Z remeshed I forgot to hit that good old apply button so I actually Z remeshed the low instead of yeah so I always forget that I need alarm saying wait before you do this hit this button so if you're using this Z remesher technique to model with make sure you hit that good old apply on dynamic subdivisions before you hit Z remesh. Okay. I just want to get more the skin wrapping around these bones or horns a little more. There we go. Not that much. <laughs> anyway, there's there's a uh, quite the lineup coming to this comic-con here in Salt Lake City and it's I don't know the comic-con here is strange because it's not it's not necessarily a comic-con like you would think it's more like a come and meet the celebrities and get their autographs 
event. You know, it's it's different than, you know, if you go to like San Diego Comic-Con, they have sideshow collectibles there. They have all, you know, tons and tons of art there. And here in Salt Lake, it's more about like, come and meet your, your favorite celebrity and get their autograph. Like Val Kilmer is coming. Um, John Cusack is coming. Some really cool actors. Joan Cusack, his sister, um, Rob Schneider, just cr awesome actors, but it's not, you know, it's not like the Comic-Con you're used to <laughs> if you go to those other ones. He does metal art? I didn't know that. Interesting. That's another thing is with with these celebrities coming you don't really get to talk to them usually it's kind of like an an ushered thing it's like okay you know come through the line take a picture now leave and you're like but but I, I want to talk to him about his metal art <laughs> and they're like nope done you're done go huh I'll have to check it out that's interesting he is my favorite part of uh, Tombstone. He's my favorite actor in Tombstone. Oh, I like Kurt Russell too, but... Okay. Uh, why are you working with Z Remesher instead of Dynamesh? The reason why is because this is a... I'm trying to do a stylized dragon, and the Z Remesher allows you to experiment. This is kind of this new, this new technique that I'm working on, and it allows you to experiment without you know, getting a crazy detailed deep mesh that's super dense that you can hardly do anything with. This this keeps the surface super smooth, very very stylized and clean. So that's why I'm sticking with Z Remesher rather than Dynamesh. And if I want to add detail later, which you should, you should always get the larger shapes first and then work your way into the the details, then uh, Z remesher is easier to do that with because Dynamesh is, especially if you're going to be posing and moving stuff around a lot, Dynamesh is very difficult because it's so dense. And it's a lot of fun because you'll see when I push in these, um, these horns like I did back here, see back here? See how the, the edge loops flow around that socket and around the eyeball? It just, it makes a super nice mesh that kind of just cruises around everything. So I can uh, come back here and kind of start to push this in. I'm gonna use a uh, snake hook. I'm running out of geometry here in order to do it with, but if I pull this, whoa, kind of skipped. But if I pull this in so it creates a socket, when I Z remesh it again, if the socket is deep enough, it will make a loop around here. You can also cheat it by uh, making polygroups and turn on keep polygroups. That's another way to kind of force it to make loops where you want. You can also use Z remesh guides, but it's not quite as uh, reliable, I guess. It's fairly reliable when you're doing certain things, but sometimes I just like to see what happens, just experiment with these sockets like this, and then Z remesh and see what happens. So I'm gonna hit that apply button again. I'm not gonna forget. Let's hit Z remesher and see what, what it does. Not too many people out tonight yet. There we go. So looks like it did a great job with this one. Pretty good job with this one and not so good of a job with this one. <laughs> take, take care, Raphael. Thanks for stopping by, man. But it makes for really cool looking sockets once you get it like that. 
because it kind of has that curl that goes in towards the horn without like sitting there and you know working it out and trying to sculpt on it. Whoa. Always yes. Kind of cool. Okay, I was going to start putting teeth on there. Teeth. Then I, it's funny because I'll usually do like teeth first and then gums later. Shoot first, ask questions later. <laughs> and the snake hook is good for making teeth. You want to make sure that you're not just moving them around from one direction. It's always good to like, you know, change your camera to like looking from the bottom up and then cur curve those teeth so they actually have direction. And then after the afterwards, I'll come back in and add some asymmetry. So they're not just like perfectly symmetrical <laughs> across both sides. Let's do some auto masking or auto groups. I'm just hiding the pairs and then hitting control W. It'll put them both in the same group. There we go. Now I can mask them by themselves. And it's kind of fun to turn them around once in a while, just make them face the other way. Like crocodile teeth or something. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Did anybody in here uh, sign up for that workshop that I'm going to be doing during the summit? Also, if you, um, so you'll notice how this one and this one are in the same poly group, but this one is unmasked. If I invert the mask and I hit control W, it will put whatever you have masks masked in its own polygroup. So that's a quick way I can put them in their own polygroup if I can remember. It's kind of hard to remember. Let's see. I'm going to grab these three, mask them off. Whoop, there we go. Invert them and duplicate them and I'm going to aim these guys up. It's going to be kind of tricky. So of course the teeth aren't just going to hang out in space. So I need to uh, push push the top muzzle in and the bottom muzzle out, or bottle, but bottom jaw. And 
So did any of you guys watch Orville this week? Just wondering your thoughts and opinions on that new, I call it a Star Trek fan fiction show <laughs> with a decent budget. <laughs> oh, thanks, Indy. So it's funny you say that. Um, did I? I think I showed you guys this, but I actually had it printed. So I don't know if you can see that. Let me turn this light up. You see that? Let's see. Make this big for a minute. I showed you guys this last time, but for those of you who didn't see it, there you go. So they're printing this out at the uh, Zebra Summit, and they're printing out the Pirate Girl. Did you see the Pirate Girl? She's in she's in pieces, but this is the Pirate Girl. Come on, focus, focus. She's missing her arm because it's in, there's a, see there's a keyhole for it and a keyhole for her scabbard. But yeah, super fun. <laughs> there's uh they're, they're printing that out. Form labs, they're going to print that out like 10 inches tall, that pirate girl. So that's what they said anyway. We'll see. <laughs> Blands, you're waiting for Star Trek Discovery. Is that this Sunday? Yeah, Rabbit, it's it's on uh, it's on Hulu. Oh dang, sorry, Indy. Dang it. Well, I might do some Facebook Live video on my Facebook while I'm there. Say hi to some people live. There you go. Couple more down teeth here. What's the show on Hulu? Uh, the uh, Orville. I just watched Orville on Hulu. The one with um, the, the guy who created Family Guy, Seth, what's his name? He's the captain. But I am, I am uh, excited about that Star Trek game, that Star Trek show. I So far I have not heard good things. So I hope it's good. But there's some critics that didn't like Orville either, and I actually didn't mind it, so... Because it was... Uh, <laughs> it's it just reminds me of a like I said a fan a fan fiction f show like if a bunch of uh, fans got together and made a Star Trek show it's kind of like Galaxy Quest a little bit Seth MacFarlane oh does he I wouldn't be surprised Seth MacFarlane yes But, uh, and, you know, honestly, that is my only complaint, is him being captain. I wish they would have cast someone else, because all I hear is, like, Peter Griffin's voice <laughs> when he when he talks. And, uh, or, like, Brian. He talks more like Brian, you know, the dog from Family Guy. So, it's just weird. It's just kind of weird. But, he, I mean, he's a, he's a good actor, and... Not bad, so no complaints. It's okay. The writing's pretty good. And they have uh, the occasional adult joke in there. Yeah, it's kind of distracting, honestly. It is. I mean, he's got a pretty telltale voice, you know. T 
teeth all over the place. <laughs> you just barely came back to YouTube or to Hulu. Yeah, that is pretty good. I don't, I don't typically watch Hulu, but I tried to DVR the last um, Orville show, and they just had football run late, so I missed it. Football. <laughs> okay. Let's. Um, I'm gonna start blocking in the body. Let's get. Let's uh, put the put the head on hold for a minute and start blocking in that body. 3D show on sci-fi. <laughs> I don't know what, what show are you talking about, Indy? Indy, I have not heard of that. Is it... It's not Red Dwarf, is it? Like that... I don't know. I don't know what it could be. Okay. Let me save this. Save as... So it does it does play on a network. I think it's on Fox, and it was on Sundays, and now it's on Thursdays. Or that's Orville. So it sounds like the new Star Trek is that right? Blands is going to be on this Sunday. Do you know what network? Is that probably Fox? Okay, I'm just going to start making up anatomy here. I don't even know what I'm doing, but we're going to we'll see what happens. There. Done. <laughs> what? Are you sure that wasn't a porn? <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright. Okay. CBS. Oh, the rest is streaming only? Really? CBS? You have to sign up for CBS? Jeez. That's not good. What's up, Rob? Welcome to the stream, man. I'm making... I don't know what I'm making. I'm trying to fake my way through dra uh, Dragon Anatomy. Just going to lightly block in. Let's see. I'm going to put him in sort of a pose to. Hey, -o. what's up, man? I like dragons that have arms. There are, I don't know, I guess you call them like feral dragons that have like their arms are their wings like bats and those are okay but I'm a fan of um, dragons that have arms and wings I don't know why Guess I'm weird trip in the rift oh that's right made in light wave trip in the rift oh my goodness that is something I haven't heard for a long time. S yes. No way. Trip in the rift. Oh, man. <laughs> Holy cow. I have not heard that one for a while. That's nuts.
I'm gonna have to go find that again and watch it. <laughs> yes, Bryce. Oh, why? You're not learning it, are you, <laughs> Bryce? They they still te they teach it in my son's high school. I don't know why. Don't ask. Make some great mountains. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> you remember like uh, True Space? Um, True Space and Light Wave and Nendo and all sorts. All right. I'm going to give him a butt, a rear. Whoa, man, it got twisted. Look at that thing. That's okay. We'll Z remesh it back to symmetry. But just for fun, I'm going to weld, mirror and weld. Yeah, look at that. It got off somehow. Sometimes that happens. If you move it, if it's slightly off, <laughs> Calgary True Space. Poser is still around. It is. I think it's now owned by Daz, Daz Studio. So Daz bought it and they just. Oh man, they just they make like they make parts for people to pose and make illustrations out of. That's their whole business. They just sell props and characters for people to kind of just stick together. I guess it's a thing. I guess people still like to do that. Poser. <laughs> Strata 3D. Oh man, so Strata 3D was made in Utah. That's what they made Mist with. Yeah, DeviantArt is full of poser art. Full of poser art. It's kind of in that, <laughs> it's kind of in the same category as like furries, right? <laughs> poser art. <laughs> Oh, sorry if there's furry fans here. <laughs> oh man, I'm getting in trouble. The Strata Cafe. So, so uh, Strata, the the first company I worked for was called Sapphire. Sapphire made, um, they made Brood Wars for Blizzard, and then. They made a couple other games, but that's the one they were most known known for. Even though they can, couldn't advertise it because, you know, it's Blizzard and Blizzard. Anyway, so uh, Strata was was purchased by Sapphire, and they called them Sapphire South. And there were some programmers and a couple of the artists down there that were were brought in. So I met a handful of the engineers from Strata. They were super cool, but they all worked on. Um, Max at the time, and I think they still do. It was interesting that they they built Mist on Strata, and Strata was Mac, but Mist was a PC game. Well, it was also Macintosh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look up. No, don't, don't, don't look at Daz 3D. There's, I mean, okay. I take that back. I know some of the artists work at Daz 3D and they do some great stuff, but the end user that purchases that stuff, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> oh, before I get into trouble. And here, here is some crazy trivia. Uh, the, the guy who started Salt Lake City Comic Con, he started Daz Studios. Dan Farr. So that's a little interesting trivia for you. And now he's running Comic Con, and he's he is not involved with Daz anymore. Is that crazy? Who knew? Oh my goodness! I'm I'm directly directly in the valley of the suck right now. So just so you know. 
like I'm sitting in there waiting waiting right through it Daz 3D it's not no it's not old and it's it is sort of crappy but it's they made tools so you can pose characters in there very very easily you don't have to be an animator you don't have to know how to rig or anything like that so you can buy these 3D models and then just pose them up however you want and then just throw them in a really quick render and make just kind of meaty, let's, let's call it amateur art with it. And that's why it's, it's all over Daz. Whoa, there's a dra <laughs> dragon butt. Where did my, where did it go? <laughs> that was funny. I better save it, it's doing some weird stuff. <laughs> Dragon ass. <laughs> I'll be here all night. <laughs> oh, I'm horrible. All right. Why? I don't know why it's not being symmetrical. Dragon ass. That's gonna. That one's gonna cost you extra. <laughs> Any solution to disease that uh, not does it crash on you, Red? Are you on patch two? It has not. It has not crashed much for me. I have to say. Sorry to hear that. This thing is looking horrible right now. Sorry. Sometimes you, you <laughs> sometimes. I have not heard much about four or eight minutes crashing. I have heard that uh, people aren't too big of a fan of the dynamic brush sizing that came with patch 2, but I haven't heard too much about the crashing. His arms are gigantic. And I want to make his neck way longer than this. Let's see. I'm going to put all this on a different sub tool then Z remesh this whoa oh P1 crash for you but since P2 everything's fine yeah indeed that's right when the brush stays the same size when you zoom in and zoom out. See how when I zoom in the brush gets bigger? When I zoom out it gets smaller. So they they decided to, to lock it on some on certain brushes and keep it the way it was on other brushes instead of just having it turned on for everything. That's dynamic right here. And because right now, patch one, it's just on by default on every single brush. So they they're they're working on a fix they're just trying to because a lot of people aren't a fan of that they'd rather have it so it's on every brush all the time <laughs> plants i like the dynamic brush i like it just fine there's nothing wrong with it nothing wrong Man, there's something wrong with my model. It's horrible. Come on. What's going on? Z remesh this thing to about a five. Let's 
smooth this out. Let's get a tail on him. this Whoop. you have noticed it but hasn't really bothered you yeah it's <laughs> it just depends I guess it, it bugs a lot of people so I'm gonna I'm gonna pose this a little bit. I shouldn't. For for game characters, I'm actually gonna turn dy dynamic off because I need my brush bigger. But for game characters, I should have this tail as straight as an arrow. But I want to I want to kind of pose it so it doesn't look too much like crap because it really is not looking good right now. I'm just going to hide all these parts. Cuz what I'm looking for is this is a flow through here and I'm not getting it. I'm getting like a stumpy dog horse thing. again. Smooth this out. Straighten it out a little bit more. Let's do a mirror and weld and do it again. See how the, it's shrinking? <laughs> the magically shrinking dinosaur dragon thing. Okay, I'm gonna hide all those. And let's get this body looking better. Turn my Z intensity down on my smooth brush. So I am doing, for those of you who don't know, I am doing a webinar tomorrow. I have an online course. It's called 3D Character Workshop. And I'm opening it for fall enrollment tomorrow along with my webinar. I know a lot of people have been anxiously and patiently awaiting for that. So I'm pretty excited to uh, announce that. It's been a while. I think I re released it in March the first time. And the students are doing amazing stuff in there. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to do this polish trick where I blend so that we have seams and it's kind of killing this flow that we have going down the back. So what I can do is get this polish brush and just come along here. It's a little too hot. Let's turn it down. Come through here and just kind of polish these seams out. Just go right over that flow. And I can use the alt of the polish and it will actually bring the geometry up to the meet to meet the brush.
So now we'll see how we're starting to get that flow. Let's knock this down a little bit. And this, my friends, is why I like to use Z-Remesher rather than DynaMesh. Because I can keep that, that flow. So if I use the polish brush on this plane change, it's not going to work. So what I have to do is I have to, um, I have to tweak on that neck a little more and change the direction of it before I, I do the, the polish trick. Okay, but here is a perfect candidate for it. If I see if you pull it out past and then polish it back in, it works pretty good. See that? Hmm. Looks like he's got turkey legs, turkey wings, chicken wings. Isn't that cool? tricks. So I'll bring it up like this and swoop it down. Okay. And these legs, these thighs are way too wide. We're going to shrink those things down. Hey, what's up, Kushwa? Welcome to the stream. What is the way that you use to change the diameter of your brush? Do you have it on a hotkey? Yes, it's just S. So the hotkey S. S is in SAM. See that? Draw size S. Um, so that's that's one. Um, so I'm just tapping it and, and moving it. And then um, another way is the bracket keys just like in Photoshop. You you can go up and down like like in little smaller increments. So it'll work like that. Is there a way to connect Geo without DynaMesh? Not that I know of. That's these days, that's typically the only thing I use DynaMesh for anymore because okay, I take that back. DynaMesh is fantastic when you want to get when you want to get all loose and like natural sculpting and you want to kind of just get in there with your clay tubes brush and do some build-ups and cutting it back you know if you're just kind of wanting to do like a traditional style sculpt portrait or something like that that is a gr really great use for DynaMesh because you can you can DynaMesh over and over and it'll just keep continue building up your sculpt so for traditional loose sculpting it is absolutely perfect for it but for uh, this kind of stylized, clean, super clean character, uh, DynaMesh, I only really use it to, to, to blend the shapes together after I'm all done blocking everything out. And I will immediately turn around and Z-Remesh it again to change it away from DynaMesh. So I don't keep it in that state for very long, if that makes sense. Just, just because it's DynaMesh is, it's so dense that it's typically, you know, kind of hard to work with in, you know, in certain instances. So, you can also do a right click and bring it up. Oh, you, you're talking about right here. So this is spacebar. You can do it right here. Um, I have my I have my right click my mouse back button set to my menu, so I really don't I don't have that on mine. I want his chest to come way down, just really like and kind of narrow out down here. Let's 
let's see. I'm just going to block in some more. Yeah, spacebar is this. Yep, that's what you're talking about. And there's focal shift on there, RGB intensity. I don't know why I never got used to using this spacebar menu. It has so many useful things on here. I just, I don't know. I just didn't get into the habit of it, so I never use it, and I, I wish I would. I know a lot of people that do, so I, I kind of wish I would. <laughs> work on the thickness of these guys. I want to get really... I'm probably going to overlay some muscles because, you know, to to pick this dragon up, these, these muscles have got to be gigantic. I'm using the transpose tool a little bit today. Miss the old transpose tool. It's like an old friend. <laughs> So super big, and then I'll get, I'll wrap that shoulder in there as well. Let's get a kind of a temporary deltoid thing happening in here. Uh, get in there. There we go. Let's see. <laughs> I bet I'm the only guy still using the ZBrush default hotkeys. You know, yeah, Paul, <laughs> Paul, Paul gets so mad, you know, uh, Pixelogic Paul. He's, uh, he gets so mad because he wants everybody to use the control zoom. So I still use the old alt zoom. So you know, if I'm holding down Alt and I left click, it's it's pan, right? And if I still hold down left click and let go of Alt, it's zoom. I still use that instead of holding Control and zooming. And um, <laughs> Paul is just like, why do you do that? This is such better navigation. Excuse me, Paul's Paul's hilarious. There we go. It's looking better already. Dry Otter, what's going on, man? Um, let's see. I remember you have a ruler Z tool you append before printing. Do you use the Scale Master Plugin 2? Talking about Dynamesh made me think of it. That seems to behave better when I'm careful about the model scale. I, I know what you're talking about with Scale Master, and I don't use it because it seems like it's more steps to me I'd rather just have uh, I'd rather just have a, a ruler in there with the exact measurement that I need like something visual that I can see at all times so and I think I still have that in here there it is it's tiny look how big my you can see how big my dragon is compared to that ruler so the rulers right here and so what that means is I will go and I'm going to scale the dragon to that ruler eventually. And I know that I'm working huge. And I already know because I tried to make my brush bigger and it maxed out. It actually tapped out. So if I stick within the parameters of that ruler and I make my, my character kind of the same size as that ruler, my brush will remain the size that it should be. And ZBrush will act the way it should. And you don't typically get that when you're using the, the Scale Master plugin. It doesn't give you all that information. So that's another that's another thing, another reason. It's my my ruler snobbiness. <laughs> Paul's wrong. <laughs> oh, I'll have to tell him. I think you're wrong. There's another thing too is the the right button mouse the right click navigation when you're using a Wacom or a Cintiq. 
and uh, I don't know if you know this or not but if you're if you're zoomed way in and I hope this doesn't kill the the stream it shouldn't but if you're zoomed way in the only way you can really rotate around your model or pan or move or anything like that is you have to go over here in this gutter see this gutter right here if you hold down alt click or, or tap on the screen in this gutter you'll pan and move and rotate okay you can rotate in this gutter but if you hold down um, if you have your your pen mapped to right click in the with the first button you can do that while hovering over your model so I'm not I don't know if the camera can see me but I'm not touching the surface I'm just hovering and I hit my right click and I can rotate and zoom and pan without tapping on the surface of the Cintiq so that's a that's another way to navigate there are a lot of people that still think you can only hold down alt click and drag to 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 make the navigation work <laughs> what are you guys oh no what's what's going on <laughs> yay peace and love <laughs> hey what's now ashley joins in the fun yay Thanks, everybody. I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to hear you guys chime in on that. Listen, 30 seconds ago, <laughs> you, can't, you can't spam that. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. Whoop. Does anybody use that navigation? That I just explained. Right click. It's a it's a hot debate. Do you use that Ash? How's it going, Ashley, by the way? Thank you and welcome to the stream. And thanks everybody. <laughs> Hilarious. Right click nation. Snake hook nation. Awesome. <laughs> oh man you guys it's great it is great like my headless dragon do you want to see my dragon I don't want to show you <laughs> here's okay let me hide let me hide the body for a second Is this? Oh, what is that? What did I do? Sorry, I must have hit the. There we go. Okay. So this. There we go. Here's my crappy dragon. So far. Puff the crappy dragon. <laughs> Shane Hook. <laughs> Yay! So I'm and I'm working on the body. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to bump my dragons. Yes. If anybody knows dragons, Ashley knows dragons. I want to see. Have you have you made any dragons while you're streaming? <laughs> Look at this this big like. <laughs> His neck looks like this big horn thing or something. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to try the I'm going to try the trick. The the move everything at once trick. Let's see. How do I do that? Select Let's <laughs> see my truck. Oh, mortar. Come on. <laughs> oh. Silly, silly. 
Okay, let's see. Control Shift to select. Well, it's just hiding everything. I have the thing selected. Transpose all subtools. See, it moves everything except for my eyeballs. Oh, because it's because it's masked or what? Well. I still haven't gotten used to how that whole thing works. Why? I guess it respects masking, huh? Okay, yep, sorry Dan Craig, I'm probably driving you crazy. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh. Uh, let me move it more. I'm going to get it clear over here. Okay, here we go. So, I'm going to make a selection. Do I have to have move selected? There we go. That's what I was looking for, is these uh, max headroom lines. What's up, Sumerian? How's it going, man? Okay. Whoops. Now I want to... Uh, I'm going to ignore the neck for a minute and line it up. Okay. <laughs> and this paint life. Sweet! Yeah, it's just my other, my other objects were in the way and it was driving me crazy. But thank you very much for your help. Oops, I forgot to turn it off. Stuck in Max Headroom land. Okay. There we go. I want to get rid of that. And now we have Dragon Head on Dragon Body. <laughs> yeah, 90s interlaced game cinematics for sure. Do you guys remember Max Headroom? Max Headroom. All right, let's get on with it. Let's get on with making these wings. It's going okay. Yep, webinar is tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. I'm going to give you a link. If you guys haven't signed up for my webinar, you're welcome to. Here's the link. If you want to sign up, um, I'm opening my course for fall enrollment tomorrow. I'm crazy nervous about it because I've never done a webinar before. But I'm also excited. It should be fun. Should be. Oh, Robotech. Nice. I love Robotech. Do I know what time it is in the UK? Um, I don't. If you click if you click on that link it'll show you how many hours are left so almost 15 hours from now is when it is it's 4 15 in the morning right now so add add almost 15 hours to that and that's when it is oh Robotech is on Amazon Prime ooh okay guys see ya <laughs> can you go watch some Robotech no way oh man did you ask that's awesome Oh, that's some of my faves. My faves. Whoa. Okay, don't be doing that. 7 p.m. in the UK. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. I think... No, I don't... In some of my emails, I have a link to a time zone calculator. I should have put it right on that page, I guess. But... I did it in the 
earlier in the day so people in different parts of the world could hopefully catch it too. Do you teach the stuff you show on the stream in your course? Uh, uh, yes, and a whole lot more. So I'll be I'll be talking about it tomorrow, but um, my course is very streamlined and linear and organized, and it has text and images and all sorts of stuff to go along with uh, like procedure, like step by step kind of stuff. It's not just me saying, "Hey, look, I'm building the dragon." You know what I mean? It's a lot of very organized, well structured. So, do I have a start date for my course, or is that announced tomorrow? So, my it's interesting. My course is is different than a lot of typical courses you might see. It's it doesn't have a timeline. It's lifetime access. So, you get access to all the videos, just like a course that has videos that you can just watch anytime at your own pace, and you can do as as many characters as you want. It's just lifetime. So. Um, you can take it fast, you can take it slow. I built it for busy people. Um, <laughs> thanks, Rabbit. Oh man, I feel bad now. <laughs> anyway, I, I designed the course for busy people that have, you know, full-time jobs and families and if they can just squeeze in a little bit here and there and just watch it when they can and work on it when they can, there's a lot of people that can't really dedicate that much time to a, a full-time course, you know? It's just not practical for everyone. So, um, but one of the biggest values is in the, 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 the private Facebook group that it has. And um, is it, <laughs> the PDF I sent out, it's pretty funny, huh? <laughs> So, uh, no, it's not, it's not homework. It's, I'll, I'll be talking about it through the webinar tomorrow. So let's see, let me, I'm going to Z remesh this again, but I want to save it before I do save as <laughs> you know, rabbit. That's actually what I did. Um, a good friend of mine gave me uh, a discount pass for Friday, so I'll be there Friday. Yep, it's totally. <laughs> That's what Steve James said. Like, Mad Libs. You just put a noun in there, put a verb. <laughs> oh, cool, Momo. Yeah, Roblums, the guy that just uh, message right above you, he's one of my students in the course. I'm sure there, there are a few of my students in here. So maybe they can attest. Okay, Ziri Mesher. I love Ziri Mesher. Look at that. So beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Love it. Dark comedy cartoon. <laughs> For sure, right? Yeah, you could put dirty words in there too. I know you want to. <laughs> okay, I'm doing that trick. Invert mask. Hit Control W to put it in the mask. Hit Control. Then duplicate it. Rotate it. Sounds like a Daft Punk song. There you go, Sumerian. If any any of my other students are in here too, you can answer that question as well. A couple of my students have already gotten work based on their stylized characters. Like Andre has gotten three three jobs from it already, which is awesome. Like three freelance jobs not three full-time <laughs> working jobs. Um, yes, Dry Otter. That, it depends on how, how soon Discord gets uh, video happening for the, the, everybody else that isn't in their beta program. Um, because the, 
Facebook Live is great, but not everybody likes Facebook. Facebook has the stigma around it of, you know, a, a gigantic time waster, which it is. And, you know, there's a lot of, like, people that, that don't really care for their privacy policy and advertisements and all that stuff. So um, I have students that I, I feel super bad because they don't want to join Facebook to get into this into my private Facebook group. And so I'm trying to work out another way that the other students can get all the benefits that the people inside the Facebook group are getting. Um, and uh, you know what? I'm going to show you guys really quick what it looks like. You guys want to see it? So this is my Facebook group. And I, I post um, Inspiration Tuesday posts. I, I like to grab characters that are awesome that I've seen and do inspiration. And here's some, a bunch of the, the students are putting in block outs. Some of them do busts, some of them do um, full characters. And sometimes I'll do animated GIF feedback, which I'll take it into Photoshop. And then I'll do this, this animated GIF. So this is the before and this is after. And then I'll also give them the, the full after so they can take it and work with it. And then I'll give some, some tips. So this is kind of that, kind of how I'm building the dragon. This is a, a tip sheet, basically showing you how to use a block out, do DynaMesh, use Z-Remesher, make a mouth, Z-Remesh it again, pull it in, and then, and then make a mouth. So I'll post little tips like that all the time because I, I mean, ZBrush is so big that I, it's, it's almost impossible to cover the entire thing in the course. So as I'm working through new techniques and new things, I'll, I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll post them up there and students will also post tips. Like they'll find something online. They'll say, Hey, you guys, did you see this? And, uh, and here's another, like I talked to Vincent because I saw him talking about his hair. He's not one of my students, but he's a, a friend of mine on Facebook. And I said, hey, do you mind if I post this in the Facebook group of mine? Yeah, do it. So um, there's some there's some really cool stuff going on, you know, uh, inside this Facebook group. And you can see that it's not stagnant. It's it's hopping. There's a there's a lot going on in here. So that's my favorite part about this course is the Facebook group. So Anyway, just want to show you guys that. It's pretty cool. And also, I do um, I do live Facebook feedback when it's usually when uh, it's usually when a student gets to almost finished, like they're they're up to that like 80, 90 percent of being finished, and they just need that little push. To make their character just more appealing and you know just whatever they need I will ask them to send me their model like just through Facebook messaging or whatever uh, and ask them to send it to me via Dropbox or something and then I'll take that model and then I will push a Facebook live feedback session just like this but only to my group and I'll record it and then talk about their model and I'll, I'll move it around and and uh, make it as appealing as I can and you can see the before and the after. And during the webinar tomorrow, or, or I'm trying to remember, after the webinar, I, I'm, I, have a, I have a video for everybody who's not in the course, they can see it. They can see how I actually give video feedback and stuff like that. But um, how do you join the group? You, you actually, uh, you have to be enrolled in my course. And my course is going live tomorrow. So, and the enrollment will be open for five days, I think. So you can get in there, check it out. Um, where did that go? Let's see. Okay. Do I have a new date for the course? I, yeah, I'm opening up tomorrow. So tomorrow is the opening date. That's why I'm doing the webinar. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to let you know about, I'm going to be doing some free training. But at the end, I'm going to be talking about the course and I'm actually going to take you through it a little bit so you can see exactly what you're getting into. So there's no surprises. And um, yeah, that's that's kind of what, what the webinar is about tomorrow. So I'll open it tomorrow and then it'll be open until next Monday. So 
that's uh yep that's the answer Do, so let me know if you need a link to the to the webinar registration if you haven't registered already I'm super excited to get some more people in there and there are a lot of good students in there that are happy to share their experiences too and there are some professionals in there that are professional in other fields like they are um you know they're 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 professional like some of them work for uh toy studios that actually do um realistic stuff you know there's a couple people in there that do realistic stuff there's a there's some cartoonists in there that are really really good that want to learn 3d and how to make toys so they can do it on their own so they don't have to go through outsourcing houses it's pretty cool yes i am going to record it so I'll, I'll make it available for all the students to watch too after tomorrow so you guys don't have to be there what's up dark and grim how's it going man <laughs> welcome to the stream man how's it going let's see welcome welcome let me turn this up Do I have an enrollment cap or just a time limit? It depends. Right now I have a time limit, but if it gets crazy and I won't be able to, I won't be able to handle that many, you know, I can't, because <laughs> I still need, I still need to give everybody feedback and stuff. So I, I can't just let everybody in, but I don't have a hard cap right now. Last, last time was perfect, like the perfect amount of students. So hopefully it's kind of an internal cap. I don't want to reveal it, but, um, I, that's the only reason I would I would shut it down early as if for some reason I got a ton of people in there <laughs> this looks kind of funny with the little so these are like those little finger things that that they can claw onto and like climb up stuff with and they look they look funny just kind of sitting there <laughs> Oh, red, really? The update fixed the crashing? That's really cool. Yeah, if anybody else has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them about, about the course tomorrow. You guys get you guys get open open question answering since you're here today. <laughs> there you go, kind of beef that up a little bit. Talking to your girlfriend about it nonstop for weeks. <laughs> we are best friends. That's right. And of course, best friends take best friends courses. <laughs> right? Teach you everything I know. Yeah, Dark, and he is. A little too curvy on this guy. So I'm going to use the, the Dylan Ekron trick here and I'm going to show you kind of what I have in mind for these wings. So, okay. So they're going to look, I got to draw it quick, but it's going to go like this. See that? That's kind of what I have in mind for the filler of this. I'm just drawing the, or just sculpting the, the kind of the wire frame of it, you know, like the, the umbrella wires as it were. <laughs> and then what's cool about dragon wings is they, they are kind of like umbrellas and the skin between them kind of has this uh, scalloped shape. Yeah. First bust, more stuff. Super cool.
and it's you know what's interesting to to me is you know like i said it's it's lifetime access so people are on their own schedules meaning some people you know they're just kind of going gung-ho and making a ton of characters i don't know where they find the time honestly but um they're just they're just cranking them out and some people haven't even started yet they just wanted to hurry and get in the course so they have access and they can start slowly going through the material and understanding it and then asking questions as they go to all the other students in there and uh it's it's really cool that way so there's no like i gotta hurry and do something um but that being said there there is something to be said about deadlines right so if you don't have a deadline maybe you won't never you won't ever get it done so what i plan on doing and for you students that are in here i haven't mentioned it to you guys yet but i i want to do some challenges like monthly challenges to kind of give you a monthly deadline as a as a little kind of a poke in the butt to get you guys going you know because uh there's deadlines are good One second. Oh. I'm, st I'm standing up and my I have a big thick cushion that I stand on and it moves sometimes. Let's see. Since you've been teaching, do you have any big teaching blunders you've had to overcome? Like I'll never do that again, teaching anecdotes? Um Yes. So <laughs> the the one I struggled with the most is uh let's see. So like the onboarding process, um trying to get people like the students going and like trying to make it linear as possible so they can build up and build into it. So at first it's just like here's ZBrush and here's all these components and here's how they all kind of fit together. And this is what this does and this is what this does. But I don't go crazy with it. It's just like kind of light and high level. And a lot of, a lot of my students were used to me, like if you've taken some of my old stuff and listened to me teach from like um, Digital Tutors or my old frog course, it's kind of like you're sitting there with me and I'm teaching you how to do the thing, right? And people love that. But my course is a little bit different in the fact that I, um, I, uh, I use a lot of text and script and I'm reading through this script so I get everything perfect and I don't waste your time. But sometimes I go a little too fast with that, it, it, which I like because you can rewind the video and watch it again and all the text is there and you go through the text and look at the pictures and it's it's kind of fast and you can run it even faster on the on the video replay you can set it to faster but also for those students that really want me to kind of sit down with them and go through it i made a three-part uh how to make a head mini bust course so it's like okay let's sit down and let's go through this and we're just going to do a head because it's really easy and simple to grasp. It's really low level and it's just three lessons and they're about an hour each. And it's just like, let's just go through this and go through the entire course, start to finish, but mini, miniature. Then it like primes you for the bigger thing, you know? So then you can get into the bigger picture. And a lot of students have really, really liked that. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, in the beginning it was, it's like, this is too fast. You know, my beta testers were like, I don't, I don't know. It's taking me, <laughs> this is too fast. I can't keep up. So if you go through the, the head course first, if you're brand new to ZBrush, it'll kind of like onboard you in a little slower. And uh, do you like it, Dark Grim? Do you like that? That head tutorial? It seems a little like easier access, a better, a better open door into the course. So What time we got here? 9.35? All right. That tail's a bit too long. 
I think I'm going to cut it off about here. And I want to make the head quite a bit bigger. Um, Sumerian, some of them are. So basically, I will, uh, I will cover a process. So I will cover like how to do hair and I'll, I'll do it in very light chunks. Like, okay, this is how you do a strand of hair. This is how you lay it in. This is kind of how you form it. And I'll walk you through it step by step. And then the next video is a time lapse of me doing the entire head full of hair because I kind of figured you don't want to sit through and listen to me real time just talk about the hair the whole time I'm doing it and get bored. So I crank up the speed, I throw on some music, and we just go to town. So, but not without covering exactly what I'm doing before I do it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, this is how to do it, now watch me do it. So then you can get the most out of it. Um, and I don't know, I haven't really heard from anyone if that really works. Yeah, you get an ex exactly an explanation and then an example. So I will show you like, I do the same thing making armor or belts or things like that. I'll just say, okay, this is how I made the belt. You know, and I take it through step by step. Here's how you do it. And now let's do it for the entire character really fast. Boom. So. <laughs> yeah, Benny Hill. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. <laughs> right, and I, I just pat on a little bald guy's head once in a while. <laughs> Let's do this. Chase, chase ladies around. <laughs> I miss Benny Hill. Good old Benny Hill. Love it, but I'm struggling to get the Z remesh to give me enough geo in the face to do your latest mouth method. So, um, just you can crank this up. You should, you should be getting enough, depending on your scene size, you know, use the ruler and get your head down and, you know, smaller than that ruler, make sure it's smaller than the ruler. And then, uh, because Z remesher number is based on how large your head is in the overall scene, the bounding box of the scene of ZBrush. So if you don't start with that ruler file first, that ruler is very important. I don't think a lot of people realize, but that, that file is very important for you to get set up and started. It's kind of a jumping off point. It, it makes, makes sure ZBrush is in a good size for you to work in. And then there's that little sphere to start with. You can just start using that and go. And if your polygon count of Z remesher is, gosh, I'm usually like a 10. I can do a full body at a 10 and it's plenty. So. I think you might have a wrong scene scale, so you might want to check that and make sure. So, and remember, you're not trying to, you're not trying to capture the details with Z remesh. You're just trying to get a solid under base mesh. So, yeah. Something can be pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, especially if you're trying to rush through it, you're like, oh, I'm trying to talk over this and I don't know what to say and it's going too fast, blah, blah, blah. But no, it's just, I, I do talk over it and explain what I'm doing occasionally. So, so far, I think it works pretty good. For the, the pricing for the course, I'll announce that tomorrow during the webinar. So I'm having a webinar tomorrow at noon mountain time. Let's see. <laughs> you have an airhead moment. Don't worry, you can get through it. You can show me on the, like post it on the Facebook group or send it to me or something. Let's see. New pages. Do, 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 do. Okay. If you want to register up for that webinar, it's right there. And that's tomorrow at noon. I'm going to open the course and I'll announce the price then. I would love to have you guys in there. Oh man, Valley of the Suck. Tell me about it. I still feel like I'm I'm right there. Straight in the valley. Down in the valley. Oh, cool. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Looks like it's in about 
14 hours from now and I'm I'm gonna tell you I'm kind of nervous <laughs> I was telling you guys I'm in a nerve oh you'll be in a work meeting that's okay there'll be a replay there'll be a replay after it so you can watch it you can watch it after the fact you won't miss it miss it you'll miss the live presentation but you won't miss it miss it it's best to watch it live but I'm looking out for you man okay see these two pink guys I need to get them in their own poly groups so what do we do auto group and then group them up there we go which is better <laughs> the uncanny valley that's on the opposite side of the mountain range right the valley of the suck and the uncanny valley will the course be beginner friendly yes it is beginner friendly yep yep sign up for the link to get the replay I will be sending it out to people who register but can't attend that's what that's for so register up let's see be awesome to have you in there NLT that would be cool Thanks, Dark and Grim. Dark and Grim is one of the one of my students, so he he can attest. Let let him tell you, not me. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, nice. I always feel like a beginner. Yeah, me too. I mean, look at this dragon, right? What the crap? <laughs> it's my first day. What is this? What is this rat tail dragon doing? <laughs> Let's fix that. It's driving me crazy. Shrink this tail of a... Snake hook. Snake hook is your friend. I thought I might want those those loopy loops in there, but nope, I don't. Cause it looks like a possum or something. Dragon possum. There we go. Better already. But now that I have it shaped like that, I do want to take it out a little bit more. Here we go. <laughs> Idiot proof. Yeah. And it's, like I said, it's, you're not going through it alone either. There's a, uh, there's that private Facebook group and they they really are like dark and grim they they really are amazing in there it's not and it's not like a, a big judging session you know we're all in it together to learn so post away you know oh intensity okay so I want you to post your mishaps in there so I can help you out if you don't post in that group and you're just like how do I do this thing you're not gonna get past that point so I encourage everybody to post in there it's awesome and they do And sometimes I, I don't always comment on people's stuff personally. There are some students in there that, like I said, they're, they're pros and stuff and they love to 
uh, help out with feedback and it's super nice but when I when I do see this is my full-time gig you know this is this is what I do I'm, I'm an I'm an instructor now so if I see you're struggling I'll I'll help you out but it's not like every Friday we're gonna do a video it's not like that because it's in, in my opinion it's kind of an unnecessarily unnecessary unless you're in a class like that that's specifically tuned that way because there are classes like that like the mole 3d classes that are fantastic if you have the time to do it hey what's up young welcome good morning where are you because it is uh 947 for me <laughs> okay I'm gonna try this again and I'm gonna drive you guys crazy that know how to do it okay how the crap Oh, that's right. I was, excuse me, I always forget I have to, I have to be on move in order to get it to do that. Come on, select it. Four in the morning. Holy cow. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you dedication right there that's what that is okay reset this Where do you guys live? <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to say. But. Oh, that's way too big, and I messed it up. <laughs> oh gosh, I forgot to turn off symmetry in the UK. Oh, you're from Russia. Six forty-eight a.m. Well, welcome to the stream. There we go. Can move this down. Ecuador. Ooh, getting late. Wow. Seattle. I used to live in Seattle. <laughs> Stay up scolding. Dedication. Awesome. Me too. We'll be wrapping this up in the next 10 minutes, though. <laughs> Reset this. Okay, I'm just kind of trying to work out proportions here. I'm going to make those wings quite a bit bigger once I get them starting to get built out.
Yeah, that's where I went to school. I went to the Art Institute of Seattle out, by, out on the piers. I don't have to admit it's not the best school ever, but hey. I was one of their guinea pigs in their 3D animation program. scale these these wings up how this webinar work I've never been to one um, it's just kind of an informational thing you know I'll do I'll do some training kind of like I do here a little more structured a little more scripted um, and then I'll talk to you uh, pretty in-depth about the course so you can understand exactly what it is wasn't Matt Thorup no, he went, I think Matt went to um, somewhere in Canada, one of the, a school in Canada. Is that what you're talking about? I can't remember the name of the school. He told me once. Anyway, at the lands at the end of the at the end of the webinar I will uh, I'll kind of I'll just basically give you a, a link to the course sales page that's typically what webinars are all about is introductions to a course or a program or something like that with some free training Yep, to sell it. <laughs> Basically, and give away some free things too. And you guys, I mean, you guys that come here all the time, you, you already know how I teach, but typically a webinar is to show people how you teach before they, before they uh, make a purchase, you know, to see if they want it or not. I'm trying to think of how I want to do this. If I want to do the, the Z remesher trick where I can make some uh, some sockets. Oh, the mis <laughs> you like the mistakes? Seven mistakes? It's kind of fun. You know, it's <laughs> I got a lot of those mistakes from from uh, from teaching in that course, you know. seeing what they do over and over again. Okay, like, hey, don't do that. And some people that I see making the mistakes outside the course too. The one about the duck. That's what my buddy Steve said too. He's like, <laughs> you could put you could put some bad words in there. Don't be putting bad words, guys. It's not that kind of webinar.
large what? <laughs> Let me use a snake hook brush and pull a little. Just had a look at the ruler in comparison to the bust, and the bust is massive. 15 centimeters. That's not that big. It's still within the ruler size, right? Because the ruler's 20. So, is that what you're saying? Is it only 15? If it's 15, then you're... Like, if, if the ruler is minuscule, like you can't see it in the head, like, like this, right? Like mine. See that ruler? See how small that is? It's so teeny. Yeah, I need I need to scale this dragon all the way down to be within the bounding box of that ruler. This is giant. So if it's only like whoops. If it's only fifteen tall, like right up to this number fifteen right here, yeah, you you should be good. So try to set your Z remesher at like a nine and see if that'll help. Like I mean you could even go up to a fifteen something like that don't be afraid but don't try to keep your high resolution detail on the surface that's that's a mistake that's something you don't want to do Oh, you're running a three. Okay. Just try doubling that then. Try a six. Um, one thing Joseph Dress likes to do with Z Remesher, come to find out, is um, he will take Z Remesher and crank it quite high. Like a, when I say high, I mean like a 13 or a 15 or something like that, even higher. Then he will he will check the half. So what I mean by that is if you go into geometry, there's the remesher. See this button that says half? So if you click that half button, it ignores the adaptive size. It ignores that number completely. Or sorry, the target polygon count. It ignores the target polygon count. You can see it actually getting grayed out because it ignores it. It's just going to take the, the current polygon count of what you have and it's going to half it when it does its algorithm and what that does is that keeps the surface volume uh, better intact so it doesn't shrink it as much and you can be a little more in control of your surfaces if that makes sense so that's a little tip by by the dressed I've been using it more lately it's a really good tip. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do with these fingers is I'm going to push in sockets, and then I'll Z remesh them, and it'll give me nice loops around those those sockets. And then I will put some claws in there that are coming out. So, yep. Thanks, Drust. <laughs> Drust. I get to see him again soon. Joseph is awesome. Okay, I'm going to copy this guy, but I'm going to stretch it way far and tilt it. Let's see. So what are your thoughts on adaptive size and curve strength? Feel you get nicer topo for things like hands, limbs, faces with lower adaptive and higher curve strength. I honestly, I'm going to be completely transparent with you. I don't, I, I've not used it much. So I'm going to now that you've mentioned some things. I'll, I'm going to give it a try. That sounds awesome because you're, you're totally right. Like the, there's a lot of times when your fingers will just get all jacked up you know you'll get like bad polys in between your fingers and you just lose stuff 
another trick that I'll that I'll do for that that I learned from my buddy Steve James is you can do um, you can do uh, polygroups around the fingers, like make loops around where the, the edge that you want to retain. Make polygroups around your fingers and maybe your palm, your wrist, things like that, and then turn on that, uh, the keep groups button right here. And that will keep, that'll retain that edge loop around those fingers, and that also helps too. And then another thing is, um, you can hold down Alt before you hit Z Remesher, and it'll do another algorithm. It'll do a completely different thing, and that might work out for you too. So um, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try that. So I should write that down. So if you if you lower it and raise the curve strength, I'm gonna have to try that. Dry. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, honestly, Drust, he's getting ready for the Zebra Summit. I'm sure he's completely slammed with that. So that is, I'm, I'm sure that's why he is not available for streaming. If I were to guess. Okay, so it is, it is 10.02. I think I'm going to call it here in a second. I just wanted to straighten out these toes. He already worked that one out. Yep. He's awesome though. I'm going to lower. And I'm constantly looking for ways to adjust the proportions, the topology, and things like that. I'm now seeing that his shoulders are way too high. So what I want to do really quickly is mask this arm, invert it. I'm going to work that arm down in space just a bit and back. Maybe inflate it so it has a little more volume to match the rest of the body. Setting up his backyard from the sculpt off. Hey, what's up, Chris? How's it going, man? You're just in time for me for me to be done. Sorry, brother. Chris is another one of my students, guys. Chris, how before we leave, how do you like the course? Tell these guys how you like it. Do you like it? Is it sucky? Got in late tonight. That's that's fine. It's all good. Thanks for stopping by, though. Oh, that's right. You're not, dude. I thought you were. In. I'm sorry. Oh, too many, too many people. Too many people. There's people. I have I have regulars that come in to the streams that I talk to all the time and on Facebook all the time. And uh, those, my students and my friends, they cross lines all the time. So, apologize. You're gonna get in there though, right? <laughs> yep, sweet. Speaking of which, since I'm wrapping up, um, tomorrow is my webinar. Tomorrow at noon mountain time. Let me get you that link. So if you want to sign up for my course and come by and check out the webinar, Here's a link where you can sign up for it. And uh, I would love to see you guys there. We'll be doing it tomorrow at noon, like I said, mountain time. And you can see there's a countdown and you can kind of work it out like how long, how far away that is in your current time zone. It's the same no matter what time zone you're in. It'll give you that countdown clock. So um, yeah, thanks everybody for stopping by. Once again, thanks Pixelogic for having me. I can't wait for the ZBrush Summit. I'm doing a workshop. I'm sponsoring the event with the 3D Character Workshop. I'll be having some shirts there. So if you guys want a shirt, come bug me and uh, see if I have one available for you. So uh, um, 
what else, what else? So, yep, like I said, tomorrow's a webinar. I can't wait. It's going to be crazy. And I'm going to open my course for enrollment tomorrow for fall enrollment for a little while. So if you're interested in that, come check it out. And I will be streaming again next Tuesday, same time. And we'll see... We'll see how it we'll see how it goes. This dragon's pretty fun. It's he's coming together. Um, I've I, I did a dragon a while ago. I haven't done one for a while. Not stylized. But uh, yeah, thanks everybody for coming by. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow. It'll be cool. I'm thinking I'm gonna get a lot of people in there that have missed my streams but have watched on like YouTube and stuff. So it'll be nice to say hello to everyone and uh, save this. So, anyway, yep, gather all your questions about the course and bring them tomorrow and ask me. I'm going to be doing a Q&A session at the very end, and I'll stay until everybody runs out of questions. So, anyway, thanks, guys. It's been fun, and I'll, I'll see you guys next week or tomorrow, hopefully, if you're not already in the course. So, take care, everybody. Have a good night. See ya.